Shiloh Worship Center, a place of breakthrough. Come and walk around, walk around. A few people, two, three, four people. Give them a high five. Tell them, welcome to Shiloh Worship Center, a place of breakthrough, a place of breakthrough. Amen. If you've said hi to about at least three, then you may be seated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Are you well? Are you blessed? Are you kept by God? Do you have a testimony? If you have a testimony of the goodness of the Lord in the new year, please lift up your hand. Let's see you where you are. Hallelujah. For those whose hands are not yet lifted, we pray that your testimony shall come soon in Jesus' name. May the Lord locate you speedily in the name of Jesus. What a time it is in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want us to look at, to go right into it. My name is Brian Moshigadi. I'm born again. Jesus Christ is Lord over my life. I'm so glad to be standing here um, in front of you one more time. The Lord has kept us. The Lord has kept us. Nimambi, Happy New Year. Hi, Happy New Year, Buana. It is good to see all of you <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ. This is our first service of the first year of, no, our first service of the year 2024. And this is the year of doing what? I'll say it with some faith. This is the year of doing what? Isaiah chapter 41 from verse 14. And that's what we're going to start with today. Isaiah 41. That's what we're going to be looking at today in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Receive greetings from Bishop Dr. Jimmy and Pastor Alice Kimani who are not in the house today, but they are here. Put your hands together. Celebrate them as we receive their greetings. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's so good to see every one of us, and from my pastor, Pastor Beatrice, who will be coming up here much later, we bless the Lord for the opportunity. I'm so excited to be back. Hear I don't know about you. I'm just so excited. Oh, my goodness. So excited <laughs> to be back here at Shiloh um, this day to just see what the Lord is doing. I bless the Lord for that opportunity. All right. Um, Isaiah chapter 41, and we're going to read it together from verse 14 to verse 16. Are you ready? You're going to read it at the top of your strength. Are you ready? You will read it until it gets into your heart. Are you ready? All right. Isaiah chapter 41 from verse 14. Let's go. One, two, three. Father, we thank you for your word today. We pray that it would please you to speak to us in accents that are clear and still, and that no one would miss you in this place, because we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So we go right into it. That is our word for the year, and it comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, which we just read. We will continue to unfold this for a couple of weeks, as the Lord gives us the grace. If you are there for the crossover service, our bishop started us off on just looking at what it looks like, or bringing the word to us, what does it look like to thresh the mountains, and what an exciting time we had while, while we just listened to what God is saying for this year. This past year, myself, this past week, sorry, uh, myself and a couple of our pastors um, went to Nakuru for the annual pastors conference, a uh, prayer conference, and we were there for the whole week, and we were just praying, and we prayed concerning the theme. Also just there, listening to Bishop Mark unfold what the theme is about, and we're going to also be looking at those things, but I love that he broke it down into three very simple things, and we're going to be getting um, our, our sharing from one of those things. The first one was that fear not because you have help. The second one is that God himself is saying, I will make you, and then the third one, he was talking about the assignment that is there, threshing. So we will be looking at those things by the grace of God, but today, we want to talk about something called help, and I've titled my sharing today, Help is Near. Help is near. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, neighbor. Help, help is near. Is near. Turn to another one, tell them, neighbor, neighbor. Help, help is near. near. Turn to one more person, tell them, neighbor, neighbor. Help, help is near. Is near. Hallelujah. 
It is one thing to know that our help is here, and we've been saying that, and bless you, Pastor Stephen, that was powerful um, today as we worship the Lord in this revealed truth. It is yet another thing to know our help is not just here, it is near. Hallelujah. Near help. Yani usaidizi ambao upo karibu. I, as I was reading this in Swahili, and today in our, in our, in our Ibada prayers in the morning, um, Karis was leading us in it, and he read it in Swahili. It was very powerful. And he shared that, reminded us that, Usiogope, wewe Yakubu ulie mdudu, mimi mungu wako, nitakusaidia. It slaps different when the person that is offering their help is God. When you consider exactly who is giving us his help, you see, there is help that can easily be despised. There's somebody that can tell you they are going to help you, but that help doesn't look like it is much help. Somebody that can offer their help, but it doesn't look like they can do much. Somebody that tells you, I'm going to help you, but you're looking at that help, you're wondering, but the person that tells you they will help you, and then ata unachangamka. It revives you. They have not even begun to help you yet. But then you just feel excited. You feel like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember a time when I was in campus. The course I studied in campus is not what I'm doing today. Hallelujah. But blessed be God, man, akazi ya mungu waina makosa. Sifia bwana yesu. Atuku tupa school fees. My mom is in the house. All right, so... Um, I remember a time, we used to travel a lot uh, in, the, in the course that I did. I studied environmental um, science education, something environmental. And, <laughs> and um, we used to travel a lot, of course. If you're going to study other, about the environment, you're going to travel around the country and see different ecosystems and see different things. And so every year we used to go out for about a week or so, and the university used to pay for us and pay us. I mean... I, I mean, your school could never. Maybe it can, but you know. Um, anyway, we went to, this time we went to, uh, was it Mao Summit, Mao Forest? We're going to check out the ecosystem in that place. And it had rained cats and dogs and their siblings. It was heavy rains. And we had those KU buses, and um, at that time, I think a lot of them were new. And we, as we were traveling, it was around late afternoon when we were going to the last place and then we would go out and look for a place to sleep. And just as we entered into, as we were getting into one of those places, forest, I don't know, we got stuck. And the more the bus continued to try to pull itself out, the more it was chimbaing for itself. And it got to a place where now half of the bus was inside, image chimbia mahali, inside the ground. So we started to realize, apart to talk is easy. Then people started looking for help. Akukuatana network, by the way, ukosasa. Tu mesumbuka kwanjia zote. And we struggled and we struggled and we struggled. And then somebody came up with a brilliant idea. They said, guys, tuneza tukatoka tu skume gari. And so all the men, <laughs> all the men came out. So tukatoka tukaenda inje. And it was still drizzling. But everybody just took a shika basi. Sasa tumeanza kuskuma. Tu mejaribu. It's not even moving an inch. Tu kangangana, tu kangangana. Sasa sisi tumingia ndani ya matope. Gari pei mingia ndani ya matope. So sisi ni wachafu, gari ni chafu. We are all wet and tired and dirty. And it's now getting dark. Then we are told this is a forest, guys. So you can't just be lingering. So ingeni kwa gari. One young man whose name I will withhold because maybe he's your relative got out and decided to, to walk alone. He called somebody to go with him, his friend. And about an hour later, he came back bearing contraband. Bags, zile za shopping bags. You see, we were going for a, for a short day's trip and then we go to look for food. So we had not eaten. So he came with food, and people were celebrating. And he said, Pin pop in a kwanga shilingapi? Kumi? Aya ni shilingi thalathini basi. Ana tuuliza, queen cake in a kwa pesangapi? Shiling kumi? Aya ni shilingi thalathini basi. Ile kasoda ndogo in a kwa how much? 50 bob? Aya ni miyamoja kwa kwele. And do you know he sold his entire stock? Because all of us were hungry, and especially us who had pushed, well, tried to push the bus, were all tired. When he came, we knew 
tumesaidika tumeona vizuri and then we realized this help was help but it was help with conditions you have to pay and i mean it was still okay help it was still much needed help alisaidia pakubwa we were not fasting okay i like to tell my friends me i'm in two seasons of life i'm either fasting or feasting so we've been in feasting now we are going to fasting i mean it's not my favorite thing to do but i do it just because i know it's benefit i don't i don't enjoy it i don't enjoy it like pastor beatrice does but i still do it anyway we are starting tomorrow she will be the bearer of those news let me not say those things nemkai mkinipenda anyway um we help came and we looked at the help and we were excited and even when we were told that the help has a price to eat we still took the help we were excited but still we had not been removed from the situation where we were in we were being fed we were being given help in that same situation we were stuck and so, so we were told hata wale wamejaribu kupiga masimu nini ni or some rangers came by by the way and told us hey hapa sasa mwezi mkatoka so they said uh, two of the rangers were given to us wakaya hapo watulinde um because i think it was dangerous forest or i don't know what so they stayed uh, out there with us and so the rest of us were told you cannot go anywhere you have to stay inside the the bus and we stayed there we spent the night there um then in the morning at the crack of dawn in fact the thing that woke us up were the farmers who come to lima with those big tinga tingas so you're just sleeping and in the distance when you know, scared those things those big um farming tools and they, they were loud they were piercing through the silence those are the things that woke us up you should have had the celebration we had not even been removed from the mud but the celebration had come because the help this was real help chana ile nyingine ile nyingine ilikuwa tu inatushibisha tukiwa tumekwama hapo as i thought about that example just this morning as we were in prayers with with the team i thought to myself how many times have i accepted help mediocre help that does not take me out of the situation that i am in how many times have i accepted that help and even celebrated it i know it is mediocre help i know it is help that will fail in a few moments but because of how bad and tired i am in my situation i just sit there and i celebrate that mediocre help because there is nothing quite like being tired and helpless So when the help comes regardless of how mediocre that help is you receive it even though that help does not seem to have an end in sight you celebrate it because help is help Did you hear what I said Now if even mediocre help is celebrated how much more tireless help help that does not have conditions help that is clean without strings attached the only kind of help that is the help i'm talking about the only person that can give us that kind of help is jesus christ who can remove us it is not just coming to remedy our situation because we were stuck guys and we were hungry so this one came to remedy our situation ha alikuja tu kutu ni kama kuweka bandaid if you need surgery if your situation if you're sick and your situation needs surgery no amount of bandages and elastoplasts can make you whole if you need surgery you must get surgery in scripture when we look at the death of jesus christ and his coming i'm just giving a quick overview of what we're looking at today if you look at the image of jesus christ what jesus christ came to do was not just to put a bandaid on the human situation he came to renew us all together he came to give us a fresh new beginning he came to root us out of that place where we were in and to give us a new start we were engrafted into a new life into the life of jesus christ such that if we if we were growing like a crooked tree then a bit of us was plucked out and then we were engrafted into the healthy tree bwana yesu asifiwe tuko pamoja we're going to be looking at that over the at the, the the few the next couple of of weeks as um as the lord allows us but i want you to have that image in the back of your mind so this friend of ours anyway alitajirika hiyo siku akasaidika uh, sisi wengine tuli filisika kimfuko lakini tulishiba na asubuhi tulipoamka tulikuwa na njaa tena lakini stock ilikuwa imekwisha alafu usaidizi wa kweli ukatoka sasa turudi kule tunaweza tukanunua vitu vinye tunataka unajua so we went and showered and, and, and so on and so forth as we're looking at the portion of scripture that we just read today the bible says in the book of isaiah chapter 41 from verse 14 it says fear not you warm jacob you men of israel when you think about the address that god is making here referring to them to israel as jacob you remember jacob was the trickster whose name was changed from jacob to 
Come on, from Jacob too. Now, the beginning of Israel in itself was not a clean beginning. The man was not a clean man. He was a trickster. He was an opportunist. He was um, a supplanter. It was not a clean beginning. That is what the Lord refers to. You see, I love, and we've said this towards the end of last year, I love that when God is coming to minister to us, he does not minister to what we pretend to be. He ministers to what we are. He does not heal who you pretend to be. He heals who you are. When Jacob is standing there wrestling with the angel of God, he's not trying to act as if he's a different person. In fact, he realizes the kind of person he is, and he realizes he needs help. So he says, I am going nowhere. I'm not letting go of you until you do what? I. Until you do what? Until you bless me. So he wrestles with God, wrestles with the angel of God, if you'd like, until the Lord would bless him. He does not try to pause it as if he is a clean man that needs nothing from nobody. You see, that is the thing that is ailing our generation because we are going about all made up, put together, looking like we have our lives in place. And so even the people that can offer us help, real help, lasting help, those people, we dismiss them. We want nothing to do with them. Why? Because we have a phrase in our generation. We say we are self-made. The lie of this generation is that we think there is such a thing as to be self-made. When we know very well, none of us, even just in simple biology, none of us is self-made. There had to be two people. Forget about their relationship. You would have a relationship. They, we may not come from perfect backgrounds. We may not come from a loving father and a loving mother who loved each other so much. And oh my God, the picture of romance as I was growing up. You may not need to come from that. You may not even know who your father is. By the way, some of us don't even know who the father and the mother is. Exist. But we said we can no longer keep walking in that victim mentality and say, oh, you know, now me, I don't know who my parents are. I don't know. Now I just sit here. I don't do anything. Hey, why are you not working hard? You know, I don't know who my parents are. That fact does not change. But are there other people who might be in that situation that have shaken it off and refused that that will be their identity? Yes. See, that's why Jesus came. Remember the example of ingrafting. We have been taken away from a crooked tree, a rotting tree, and being grafted into this healthy, going up tree, strong tree. The Bible refers to it in Isaiah, is it 61 or 60? Talking about how you shall be known as the planting of the Lord, mighty oaks of righteousness. The Lord himself has taken the time to plant you, to set you up with what you need for growing. Vanessa Sefiwe. Again, back to what we are talking about. It is not about where you are coming from. So the Lord does not try to, um, or Jacob, sorry, does not try to pause it as if he is a self-made, complete man that needs nothing. I need no one. Me, I'm okay. I'm good. Let me make my own mistakes and learn from them. A friend of mine likes to say that the, fo the, the foolish man is a person who insists on making, learning from their own mistakes. A wise man learns from other people's mistakes. I don't have to make the mistakes myself. That's what I learned. I can look at other people. I can listen to the advice from other people. That's why we cannot ignore our fathers. We cannot ignore the generations that have gone ahead of us. I can't ignore them. We cannot. Can we make resolutions in this service? I know some of us don't like resolutions, but it's okay. Let's make them anyway. We, we, we have to make a resolution this year to surround ourselves with some people that are wiser than ourselves. Some people that have gone ahead of us in every area of life. If you're a person in business, go to a few people that are doing business. I mean, Forbes 500 companies. One year. Siku yenye watu wanatumia jiko na gas. Ah uh, wanatumia gas sorry. Yeye yeah, anauza makaa na stoki na isha na unataka kujua anafanyanga nini hiyo makaa iende. Ana convince watu wenye wako na gas kwa waje ati wanunue jiko, wanunue whatever makaa. Unafikiria hiyo business strategy vinye nini? Na watu wa makaa atawakufangi na branding. Unaona vinye si tuna brand mabiashara. Like <laughs> roll up banner. Yeye yeah, yeah, anatumia what is available. In fact, hapo mahali duka yake ni ambao. Iyo makaa na uza ndiyo anatumia hapa anandika makaa 80. I, I memaliza branding. Waitherero hakikufa huku na kufanya branding. Serious branding. Have you seen Joyce branding for her company? My goodness. It's just giving what? Luxury. That's right. <laughs> it does something, the luxury, that's true. 
lakini akifanya hizo my events anataka makaa anaenda kwa mtu akona branding hata sijiona huu hata ukiona mtu wa makaa akona branding marola bana hata una doubt huu <laughs> anaosha do huyu <laughs> Jacob does not pause it as if he wants nothing from the Lord. He goes to the Lord in plain, in plainness. In fact, little wonder, to this day, we still refer to God as God of Jacob, Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob. Still to this day. Because this is a man who went plainly before the Lord, acknowledged his weakness, acknowledged the mountains, so to speak, that lay in front of him, the mountains that were very much in his life. You see, some of us are in a place where there are mountains in front of us. Others are in places where there are mountains around us. Some of us are living inside of mountains. You already have done interior deco in that mountain. So you're wondering, threshing the mountains, what is wrong with the mountain? The, I've made a nice cave for myself. I mean, the mountain is not so bad. There's a condition, I forget what it's called. Some of you will help, you, will help me when I say it. Um, of, of some people who, when you have been kidnapped, you bond with your kidnapper. Stockholm Syndrome. Thank you, I told you, wise people in this service. Stockholm Syndrome. You, you, you have been kid, kidnapped. You're not home. And at first you fight this person, you fight them, then you stay with them, and then now they are all you know. You're talking with them, now they become even your therapist. You sit with them, you're just sharing with them how it used to be so bad at home. They make you look like, you oh, know, this life is significantly better than what I left back at home. That is not true. But a lot of us, that is where we are living. The enemy has lied to us that this situation we are in is permanent. You can do nothing about it, so you might as well be comfortable where you are. That's why, for me, threshing the mountains is a big deal. I am glad that even the mountains, whether they are in front of me, around me, or I am living inside of them, those mountains I will thresh. I shall not be left in a place where I am struggling and trying to convince myself and um, motivate myself into believing that there's nothing wrong with these things. So I go to the Lord just as I am. So the Lord still later, years later through the prophet Isaiah, still addressing Israel as that dirty place where he came from and saying to him, listen, fear not, he says, you warm Jacob, you men of Israel, I will help you, says the Lord, and your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. The Lord himself has offered his help. He says, I am going to help you. We said that if help is celebrated, even mediocre help, help that is not going to last forever, how much more? The help of this one that is the redeemer of Israel. And we know what it sounds like. We know what it means to, when God refers to himself as the redeemer of Israel. We read the story right from when they went into the land of slavery um, in the days of Moses. No, the days before Moses, actually. When they went in the... Um, when they went to Egypt, sorry, and the Lord works them over those 400 years of activity, uh, captivity, he works them into a mighty great nation, then sends Moses to come and break them out. And then they go into the wilderness and go into that entire journey into Canaan. And then they go against what the Lord has taught them. And then things begin to happen to them. The Lord is addressing them. But we know over the years what it looks like for God to say, I am the redeemer of Israel because we have seen him redeem Israel. That Israel over and over over and over again. So we know the help that we are being offered is good help. Turn to your neighbor, tell them neighbor, we are being offered good help. So he says, I will help you, says the Lord and your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Then he says, behold, I will make you into a new threshing sledge. When you're thinking about the idea of help, just looking at the Redeemer of Israel. I want us to look at, there are many examples where we will find over the course of this year by God's grace. There are many examples where we will find God being the Redeemer of Israel or redeeming Israel. To redeem is to bring people back. To buy back people who had been given off or taken away or stolen off. Okay. So when God is saying the Redeemer of Israel, he's referring to himself as the one who brings back his people. These people who are just going away and then he brings them back again. Goes out, go away, he brings them back again. They give themselves, sell them off as slaves, they, he brings them back again. So we're going to look at many examples of that. One of the good examples is found in the, in the book of Zechariah, which we're going to look at, at Zechariah. We're going to look at chapter 4. But just to give a little bit of a, of a background um, of where we are, by the time we get into Zechariah chapter 4, 
So uh, the children of Israel along the journey of their life, just as I've said, have gone through many things and um, they have been warned when they got into, the, into Canaan, the promised land, they have been warned by God. They've been told, please guys, you need to live lives that please the Lord. Do not intermingle with that Canaanite um, religion. Do not get into their culture. Do not get so easily absorbed into their culture without even thinking about it. Think about what the Lord requires of you. Remember the Lord who has taken you out of slavery. Consider what the Lord has done done for your forefathers and live your lives for him. The same instructions that you and I received today, the same instructions they received back in the day. But what does Israel do? Because of the lie of the enemy and the works of the flesh, they see every new shiny thing. They're like children. Ooh. They see a God. Ooh. They forget about the real God that took them out of slavery. They see a shiny God. They're like, ooh. You see, because for them it's easier, not just for them, even for us, it's easier to believe help that is this help near help than to believe a help that they just need to believe the help is near but they need to believe wao wanataka help yenye tunaona banisha asifiwe sana so it was easier for them. So they go into the Canaanite religion. And of course, because choices have consequences, the things that the Lord had promised would happen, begin to happen. It's like if I stand in this place and I tell you that if you sleep around, you're going to get pregnant, for instance. That when you get pregnant, it is not a punishment because children are a gift. Because <laughs> children cannot be the punishment. Children are a gift from God. But that is a consequence. It is a consequence. So there are such things as consequences, as Pastor Kibera would put it, consequences of misbehaving believers. Some of us are just misbehaving believers. And so they, there would be consequences, just like for Israel. So there are consequences. In the course of those consequences, some of the things that happen is that they are led off from the Israel, from that place in Jerusalem where they are. And there was a beautiful temple that had been built by, um, what's his name? Solomon, the beautiful temple and where they went to worship the Lord in Jerusalem and it was beautiful and things were good. But then they have gone against the teachings of the Lord and they have intermarried and they have um, worshipped idols and they have fallen off with God. And so they are led off as slaves. Okay, so they are led off into, into um, exile, um, Babylonian exile. Okay, and they are away for 70 years. Now, God in his kindness still sends prophets to go to them and speak to them. Tells them, you are here because you did one, two, three things. But you can come back to the Lord. Sends a line of prophets. Now, there are some people who believe and are devout. There is a remnant that still believes in the Lord. But then, there are some people who, even in exile, are just still listening to false prophets. The worst that can happen has already happened. So the they remain there. Some people perish, of course, there. The Lord sends Jeremiah speaking in that time in, in exile. And from the portion of scripture that we know, very common, Jeremiah 29 and 11. It says to them, there are some false prophets who are telling you that there's going to be, um, you know, help has come at that time. Telling them, oh, you're going to be, exile is about to come to an end. He's telling them, this is what the Lord says. We are not getting out of exile. In fact, we're going to be here about 70 years. Marry, intermarry, get children, build houses, um, get wives for your sons and for your daughters and so on and so forth. Um, and that's exactly what they do. But then at the end of the 70 year exile, there again appears God in his mercy and he brings the people back to the land that he has promised and sworn to their forefathers. When they are coming back, of course, things have happened. The land lays desolate. It has not been inhabited. It's not the glorious city of Jerusalem as we would know it. It's not the place of Israel as we would know it. The temple that had been built has been destroyed. And so now the people that have been brought back have the heavy task, almost seemingly impossible task of rebuilding the temple of the Lord. They are seemingly starting afresh. The Lord gives them that opportunity. Now, in that time, the civic leader at that time is called Zerubbabel. Now, Zerubbabel is the one to oversee the work of the rebuilding of the temple. Now, people come in. You can find this story well in the book of Haggai. Um, it's only two chapters, Haggai 1 and 2. We'll not look at it because of time, but you can read it for your own good time. Bible study. Anyway, 
So they start to build the, work, um, the temple. Now they build the altar of the temple. They start well. Steam, 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 steam. Wako ready kufanya kazi ya mungu. Nao naifanya. And then at some point tu wanachoka. Vinye tu tunakuanga. Must all projects are 2023 bonus fair sana. Kuna watu wameamua. Umesema 2023 mimi na iyo kitu. I thresh that mountain. Then 2023 inakuja inaisha. And now here we are. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, it is well. <laughs> There's a new opportunity to restart, to start with God. This time you have help. That's why it's important. Hallelujah. You're not doing it by yourself. So anyway, they rebuild the temple. altar. So they stop the work of the rebuilding of the temple. They decide, let's go and build our own houses. So they go and they build their own, the Bible refers to it in Haggai chapter 1 as paneled houses. Nyumba, beautiful, supu, supu. Now the break of the building of the temple, Mali wanaanza alafu wanayache, is about 18 years. They have built their temples and the place looks, their houses, not their temples, their houses look nice. And so God comes with a charge against them in Hagar and he's asking them, guys, my, my house is still lying in ruins. You guys have built for yourself nice paneled houses. Guys, what any jokes, Bana? Atakani resources in Meisha. Me mean to provide their resources. The gold is mine and the silver is mine. Hagar chapter 2 and 8 is it. it. says the gold is mine, the silver is mine. Come back and do the work I'm calling you to do. So in Hagar, the focus mostly is the rebuilding of the temple. But around that time, another contemporary or contemporary of, um, of uh, Haggai, the prophet, is Zechariah, the prophet, who is ministering in around the same time. In fact, their prophecies are following each other with about a month's break, within a month of each other, Zinafuatana. The Lord is speaking through his different servants, because even in that time, there are still remnants. Now, when the Lord is using Haggai to talk to Israel about the building of the temple, he's using Zechariah to talk to them about building themselves up to love the Lord, to build a relationship with the Lord. So there are people who the Lord is speaking concerning the temple and others that the Lord is using them. He's gracing them to speak about the lives of the people. He's telling them, guys, when the book is opening, Zechariah chapter 1, it starts by opening and says, this is what the Lord says. Because he was angry. Some of you, he has sent his, his, um, his prophets to your forefathers. Your fa he's told them, stop living lives of sin and deceit. Return to me. Your forefathers did not listen. They rejected that message. And in fact, God is in very um, uh, sarcastic language. He's asking through the prophet Zechariah, where are your fathers now? Even those prophets, are they here? But the word of the Lord is still remaining. The prophets have passed, the fathers have passed, but still the word of God is still remaining. And to this day, the same thing. So he says to them in Zechariah chapter 1, he says, return to me and I will return to you. He says to them, come back to me and then I will come back to you. If you guys want me to help you, so you just come back. Help is right here. If the help seems far, guess who is away? A story is given about this woman who was driving with her husband. And they used to, you see those old vehicles, those old Buicks or Volvos that used to have a bench seat in the front? Do you guys remember those ones? Even the Peugeots back in the day. The old Peugeots we used to used to go to our Usha. At least in my Ushago, we used to have those Peugeots. It was Konyakakasu Baruleon, like in Peugeot. I'm get his ogari. I'm going to get because of Mercedes. Mercedes? Okay, great. Let me tell you about my day. Okay. So anyway, the front seat there was like a bench. Like a, think pro box back seat and then bring it to the front, okay? Oh, it's closer home now. Okay, wonderful. Um, so, so it was possible for, you know, um, the drivers to just sit with next to their passengers. It was very good for families. It was very encouraging of romance, you know, just love each other. Unajua, unajua, Pastor Beatrice na mpua wake wako wapa karibu too. You can drive while holding hands, you know, it's just, nika mekalia tu bench. Nice. Must be nice, guys. Yeah? May the Lord remember you in 2024. Some of you are looking at me like, your eyes are so vacant, like, there's such a thing. I <laughs> came this is the right service. <laughs> you came to receive your breakthrough, somebody. <laughs> I see hands in the back, hallelujah. <laughs> May the Lord remove your heartbreak in Jesus' name. May he wipe your pain, take away your tears. Help is here, boy. Anyway. Anyway. Um, 
So uh, this ad, um, this lady, sorry, used to sit with her husband. She was seated with her husband, and as they are driving, because a lot of those model vehicles, the model, a lot, hey, a lot of those vehicles, the model was the same. So people, no, 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 mamba yati inti mekuja juzi kwa ima barabara. Ukiangale inje unaona mwenzako wanaenda pia yo, wapo wa meshikana, wa permanent wa meshikana, wa verified wa meshikana. Unajua, it was just, you know. So this woman is recorded and she's asking her husband, um, we, we used to sit so close together. What happened? Because you see the driver is here, there, are, there is no space here in the bench. So you can just sit right next to me. So you can just sit right next here. But the, the, the woman is looking and she's wondering, yeah, mbali, kuna all this space here. And she know, we used to be so close together. What? I see other people, they're just driving, they're just together, just here. And the husband is saying, well, I didn't move. And of course, the husband could not have moved. He's driving. You can only drive from one position. So if there's distance, guess who moved? It's the exact same thing as the Lord is calling the people of Israel. He says to them, return to me. I am your God. I have never moved a single day. He says, return to me and I will return to you. If help seems like a distant thought, guess who is away? You see, and I thought to myself, what a challenge to myself as I begin the year. To think if it seems like e help in stories are jabs, then guess who moved Moshigadi? It cannot be God because God is still in the exact same place. In fact, he says, return to me because he has the confidence that you know where you left me. If every one of us took some time to just think a little bit closer in our lives, you would know where you left you would know where you veered off the road. But the Lord in encouragement, not in condemnation, calls to us and says, return to me and I will return to you. His return to us is a proverbial return to us. It's not him putting his legs and walking in our direction because he's right there. He's just waiting. He's just waiting. He's just waiting. A good example for us to understand that is in the book of Luke chapter 15 is that the story of the prodigal son, which we'll not get into again because of time. But the son is the one who left home. The son is the one who went wandering. The son is the one who went and drank, living wanton lives and just squandering the money. The son is the one who went down to another country. The son is the one who sought employment and was eating not just with the pigs. He would gladly eat what was left by the pigs. But the Bible says he did not get anything. It was the son. The father was left where? At home. So one day the son comes to his senses and he says, I will get up and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I'm no longer pleased to be called your son. And in his folly, he thinks, maybe I should even berate myself, take a lower place and say, make me like one of your hired servants. But you see, the good thing about God's help is that it is unconditional help. It is tireless help. It doesn't matter how many times you've come to God before. If you make up your mind today, you can say, by the help of God today will be the last time I am making this decision. I will go back to God and I will stick with him. So he goes back and before he can berate himself, the father just shuts his mouth and says, ah, put a robe on him. Bring a ring and put it on his finger. Put some sandals on his feet because my son who was lost is now found. In fact, take the, the fat end Ngombe, change it. There is going to be celebration in this place today. Hallelujah. So the Lord calls them and says, return to me and I will return to you. So if there is the seeming distance between you and the help that God has promised, it is important for us to sit and ask ourselves, where might I have lost it? Because it cannot be God. I know, I know I know in our generation, we like to think the problem is God. We like to think God is the one that... <laughs> We've had the statement again and again that God is unfair. We've had the statement, why do bad things happen to good people? We are constantly thinking, it cannot be me. But if we took some time to just consider, it highly likely might be me. Then we will take the help. 
taking the help looks like just sitting down and thinking about where did I lose it? Where did I go away from the place of help? The prodigal son asking himself, how many of my, hired my father's hired servants have enough for them and even for their people? Yet me, I'm here languishing in poverty. The help he needed was food at that time. Livelihood, at least. And it wasn't forthcoming. Not that the help was not available. Help was there, but he, it was not near. And the person that had left was who? Him. So he needed to just go back. As we think about help being near, it's important for us to just consider, and allow me to belabor that point just a little bit further. It's important for us to consider that the help is here. God has made sure of it, that the help is available. So if it seems like it is far, it's highly likely me. A few things that we can do as we learn this today, as we're thinking about what to look at is that when we look at the people who have considered their lives, the story of Jacob that we're just giving, looking at his life and the quality of his life and thinking, ha, ah, I need help, until God actually changes his name. And look at people like the prodigal son who looks at his life and realizes, hey, I need help, and desires or decides to turn his life around. When we look at those people, there are a couple, there's a trend that we can seemingly see, a simple trend that I thought to myself, we can take for ourselves and run with that can help us to actually take the help that is needed. Yeah. So these people, you, they acknowledged the situation that was in front of them. So we're talking about mountains, quite figuratively. So they acknowledge their mountains, right? To acknowledge the mountain looks like this. You do not act like the mountain is not there. You acknowledge that this mountain is a mountain. If you think about your own personal life, the things you're struggling with, if you acknowledge that you're actually struggling with them, that is not a bad thing. In fact, it is a thing of commendation. You ought to acknowledge the things that put you down. Acknowledge that it is a weakness. Acknowledge, in fact, acknowledge that it is a mountain. I give this example. I saw um, somebody share a meme the other day uh, and saying, um, somebody, it was, the, it was a photo of an old man reading scrolls. You see, like those photos of the New King James, the old man reading a scroll, Natumiwani, Amekapa, and Asoma, two long scrolls. And then the caption was, me at 3 a.m. reading a back and forth argument between two strangers on Facebook. And that's usually me. I really enjoy it. Just when you have to Facebook, and two people arguing. They could be arguing about anything. They don't even know each other. You don't even know any of them. Just like, oh, he said that. Oh, my word. Three in the morning. Give you a quick sit, sit out prayer. <laughs> um, so anyway, I remember this, this um, exchange that two people were having. And so one person, you see this thing that people have been doing? Bless the Bless the Lord for the youth service. You see, people have, been, people have been doing NGL. No gonna lie. 2023, tell me something about your year. Confessions. You've seen that thing? Oh, come on. I've seen some of you people share it. And it's good. It's, it's okay. Some of those responses were mine when I was just telling you, I think you need to come back to Jesus. <laughs> if you saw that, it was me. <laughs> I know they're supposed to be anonymous, but you know, it was just me. I was like, my confession... My confession is that I think you're living just a tired life. Come back to Jesus. That was me guilty. Anyway, um, I remember somebody had shared something like that just this past week. Uh, it's not even somebody I know. I don't even know how they came up on my feed on Instagram. I was just looking at their stories. It was dots, dots, dots. So many responses. I was just enjoying. Just, hmm. just. So the guy, somebody told him, I think... I think I gathered the guy is a worship leader or something in their church. I don't know. But I, I gathered, somebody said to him, um, I think you're full of pride, man. You just need to serve the Lord in humility. I was like, ooh, child. <laughs> I was like, more snacks because it's going down. Then the guy, of course, responded. So you put the ninis there and you respond. It's like, I think people just misunderstand me. There's a difference between confidence and pride. 
you know. And they went back and forth. The guy who I think, or lady, who had posted that thing, who had written that thing, I think I can your response. I could like, no, uh uh. I can jibu, I can respond tena. Sini anonymous. I can respond tena. So it became a back and forth until finally. So the guy is like, oh no, I'm not proud. You know, I'm just confident and you can't put me down for that. Nini, nini, nini. And it went on for like three or four posts. And then I think a totally different person wrote now to this guy, this, I think, seeming worship leader or minister, I don't know where he serves, Akamandikia, maybe pause and consider that it, you highly likely might be proud and you don't even know it. And it reminded me of uh, something Joyce Meyer likes to say, that pride is the most deceptive sin because even when you have it, you are too proud to admit it. And I thought, my goodness, you see, those are some of the small two things that we think are small, but they are really mountains, and your friends around you are telling you, and your people around you are saying it in many different ways, but you just cannot admit, you can't imagine, you can't fathom the idea that you could be proud. And pride is just one thing. Maybe some of your friends are telling you, hey, Mashigadi, maybe, you're, maybe you're living a life, maybe you're going to last. I'm like, I will have you know that I'm a man of God. I'm anointed for this generation. There cannot be last in my life. The only last in my life is everlasting life. <laughs> and, <laughs> but if two or three people are telling me that, maybe I need to pause just a little bit and consider, could everyone be wrong and me right? Is it possible that maybe this is a mountain I'm not acknowledging? And those are just examples. Think about the things. Maybe some of the people are, calling, are saying you're lazy. If all your teachers in school, you have 12 subjects or seven, come on, we shall select subjects. If all your teachers just say, you know, you're a lazy bone. You're a lazy bone. You're a lazy bone. And then you're just in the power room, just say, I refuse those negative labels. I reject them. Maybe just stop rejecting for a minute and consider it's highly likely you might be the laziest bone the, because you have seven lazy bones. Or 12 if you have 12 subjects. Well, I'm not saying that is always the case. But consider that maybe there are mountains we are not acknowledging. When we look at the trail of all the people that were helped by God in scripture, the first thing they did was to acknowledge their weakness. I remember the story of blind Bartimaeus, seated down and shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Because that blindness was so much of a mountain, it was his identity. We know him as who? Blind? If you said just Bartimaeus, guys would ask you, Mgani? All in blind. Whether you go to people and they're telling them, Atulkwata na mwashi, mwashi gadi, mwashi gadi mgani, unajua angapi mwashi gadi shwali. Tama, oh, tulikuwa na, 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 tulikuwa na, na wanjize. Wanjize mgani, unajua wanjize wangapi, umtu wanaitua wanjize, ulisikia wanjize wapi. Niyo tu maja, but anyway, tulikuwa na Myers, Bati Myers mgani, ule blind. It was his identity. But as he sat there, he had acknowledged that this thing is a problem to me. You see, me, I'm the one who can't see. You guys that are telling me to shut up, you, you can see where Jesus is passing. You're telling me there to shut up. I pray that this year we just make a resolve to acknowledge our mountains. To stop walking around looking all made up. Just acknowledge your mountain. Just, just acknowledge it. Especially to God. You might not acknowledge your mountain to everybody. I mean, because also, I mean... The streets are cold. <laughs> but acknowledge your mountains to God. Take the help. Just acknowledge your mountain. It will do you good. I turn to your neighbor. Tell them neighbor. neighbor. Acknowledge your mountains. Acknowledge. Another thing that we can do is just to despise our strength. You acknowledge your mountain, you despise your strength. You know what that means? They go hand in hand. When you've acknowledged your mountain, you realize how big that mountain actually is. Then you realize you cannot do it by yourself. Even as, I, as strong as I am, I cannot beat this mountain by myself. As strong as I may be, I cannot put this thing down. 
consider how long you've been trying to put some of those mountains down. Some of us have been in cycles and addictions and chains for years on end. One year, two years, three years, four years. It can be a counting song in nursery rhymes. Every year, every year. Maybe consider how you are not as strong as you think. Just despise your strength. I love Philippians chapter 2 from verse 12, talking about how continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. If you read it in the Amplified Version, one of the portions there, it says, as it expands it, itself, with fear and trembling, um, with self-distrust. That is despising your strength. You can have it up there, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, in the Amplified. Um, with self-distrust. Aha. Uh -huh. two, two, off, two, off. two verses. Two verses there. So then, uh -huh. that is cultivated. Bring it to full effect. Actively pursue. Continue to work out your salvation uh -huh. in spiritual maturity with all inspired fear and trembling. Using serious caution. That is the quality of one person who is despising their strength. Using critical self-evaluation to avoid anything that might offend God or discredit the name of, of, of Christ. The Amplified Classic includes there with self-distrust and timidly shrinking away from anything that may discredit the name of Jesus Christ. You must decide this year to despise your strength. Can't your neighbor tell them, neighbor, you're not as strong as you think. Tell them you need help. If it looks as basic as just asking for help. If you're in the office, you're constantly struggling with something. Just kubali, Excel sheets is not your strength. Unapewa assignments kila wakati ukotu nyuma, you're just falling behind, you're just lagging behind. Maybe just acknowledge that, my guys, stop giving me Excel assignments. Sju Excel poor. Formula, formula. Hey, Brian, you're supposed to submit this thing. You're supposed to submit this I cannot submit it. Please give it to somebody else. Nipatieni kazi za word. I will type like a typewriter. In the night, in the day, any time. That's okay. Just despise your strength. Or ask for help. This time, Mao came. I will come to you in the name of the Lord. As you come to it in the name of the Lord, come to it with a friend who is good in chemistry. Come Hey! Tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Acknowledge, your acknowledge your mountain. Despise your strength. Despise your strength. Then number three, you will be able to appreciate the help. If you want to appreciate the help, you start from the end. You acknowledge your mountain, you despise your strength. You will appreciate the help. You look at all the people that have been helped by God in scripture. That is a thread that weaves them together. They have acknowledged their mountain. This is a big mountain. I have acknowledged it. I have realized I cannot do it by myself. I have despised my strength. I have timidly shrunken away from anything that may discredit the name of Jesus Christ. Then I appreciate the help. So now, when I've done those things, I can come to the mountain again and introduce myself and say, like Bishop reminded us, who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Yet you shall be brought down. By the grace of God, the next time you're sharing, we'll look at the, um, how Zechariah dealt with this thing. How he went to look at the mountain. How he decided to address the mountain as a personality. And what drove him to that place. But if we're going to thresh any mountains at all, anything that stands in front of us, first you cannot thresh a mountain that you do not even acknowledge that it exists. Where is the Jifichi mountain? Buenas Where's the Jifichi mountain? At Unataka Kuitokelezea to no Kunyuma. We are thresh you. You have to acknowledge first that it is a mountain, that it is there, that it is a mountain that needs to be threshed. Not that it is a threshable mountain. We have already been given the word of the year. Every mountain is threshable in Jesus' name. But we acknowledge that it is a mountain that needs to be threshed. Some of the mountains we may not thresh are the mountains we are refusing to acknowledge as mountains. First, you acknowledge the mountain, then you 
despise your strength. You realize I cannot do it alone. I'm not as strong as I think. And then, by the grace of God, I will be able to appreciate the help. Then every day I'm just so grateful that I have help. I'm so grateful that my help has come. I'm so grateful that my help has a name. I'm so grateful that my help is tireless. I'm so grateful that that help is with me. Here, it is near help. Take a minute, lift up your voice. Ask the Lord to help you to do those things. Ask him, say, God, I want to appreciate the help you've given to me. But I cannot appreciate it unless I acknowledge the mountain. This week, help me to acknowledge every one of my mountains. I want to know them one after the other. I want to know this is the mountain and this is a mountain. Some of them, you have been kept from acknowledging them because you are ashamed. Some of them, you are feeling like you will be condemned. But no one is in the business of doing those things. No one is in the business of doing those things. No one wants to condemn you. Everybody has their own mountains. Every one of us. Nobody is in the business of trying to, to, to condemn you for the mountains. So acknowledge them. Some of you are feeling ashamed. You know somebody who can help you, but you don't want to go to them because you're wondering, what will they think of me? Go to them. Shame is a thing that keeps us from acknowledging our mountains. Because the day you acknowledge the mountain, you have come close to threshing it. You must acknowledge that mountain. You must acknowledge that mountain. Is it laziness? Is it lust? Is it pride? Whatever it is, you can bring it to the Lord. Is it fear? Is it anxiety? Is it guilt? Acknowledge that mountain. Ask the Lord to help you to acknowledge those mountains this week. Then ask him also, after you've acknowledged him, that you will not just shrink, you will despise your strength. You will not acknowledge this is a mountain and then run to it to want to finish it by your strength. You cannot do it. The arm of flesh will fail us always. You've tried it so many times. If that is not proof that your strength is not enough, I don't know what is. So despise your strength. Ask the Lord to help you to despise your strength. And then ask him to appreciate, to help you to appreciate the help. That you can be able to say like the psalmist in Psalm 18, by God I can crush an army. With my God I can run over the highest mountain. By God, you appreciate the help because you realize this is a mountain and I cannot do it alone. But with God, I can run, advance against a troop. With my God, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can run over a mountain. Father, we thank you for every word that is rising up to you today from our hearts. Thank you because you're following it up to pursue it. We thank you because you will help us and grace us this year to thresh every mountain. Thank you for the assurance that every mountain, indeed, without exception, every mountain is threshable. But for us to thresh it, we must acknowledge that it is a mountain. We must despise our strength and not go it alone. We must appreciate your help and allow you to help us. We thank you. We bless you. We glorify you. We accept your help. We celebrate and appreciate it today. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Now if you can put your hands together, lift your voice, celebrate the name above every name. Come on, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Come on, lift up your voice, Shiloh. Celebrate Jesus. Amen. Have a victorious week in Jesus' name.